What's up, Prime Fam? So in today's video, we're gonna give you guys three power building tips, and we're starting off with tip number one. Now, before I dive into these tips, I think the thing I really wanna discuss is ensuring that some of you are gonna hear these tips, and you're gonna think, I already do that, or I already kind of know that, or that makes sense, but I want you to hear the intricate details of what I kind of talk about, and I'm actually gonna be showcasing my own results over the last like 10 years to display some of this, because I think these are fundamental things that people think they know, but make huge mistakes on. And when it comes to training for power building and dieting for power building, it is a very different approach than being fully a power lifter or fully a bodybuilder. I think people make the largest mistake assuming one of those identities where they're like, okay, I'm a power lifter, but I'll do extra accessory work and make sure I stay lean and that's power building. That is not power building. Likewise, I'll meet people who are really aesthetics focused, but they enjoy training the big three and getting stronger on them. And so they kind of train like a bodybuilder, but just make sure they include the squat bench and deadlift into their training. And they think that is power building. Again, this is not power building. You have to be a little bit more careful with some broader aspects. And that's what we're discussing in today's video. Starting off with tip number one is gonna be nutritional periodization. So what I wanna discuss here is how to bulk and cut over the long term. And if you guys have been following me for a while, you'll know all the way from 2016 to 2020, I was on a long-term bulk. I gained all the way up from about 205 pounds to 226 pounds. So I gained almost about 20, 21 pounds of body weight in that time span over the course of four years. Of course, I did little cleanup diets here and there, but for the majority of that, I was in a caloric surplus. And then if you guys have been following me the last couple of years, you know from 2020, about halfway through, till about halfway through or towards the tail end of 2022, I was on a cut slash maintaining a leaner physique. So I wasn't cutting the whole time, but I was maintaining a very low body fat percentage during this time period. And the number one piece of advice I could give power builders is to think long-term with their bulks and cuts and to do what I call earning your cut and bulks. So I recommend a three to two ratio at minimum of bulking to cutting. So meaning the bulking has to be three, the cutting has to be two, and that is the minimum. And if you're doing an all-star job on your bulks, it should actually be more like a, oh, I wrote one to two, I meant to write two to one ratio. So two times 50% more basically, or twice the amount more of your bulks to cuts. And the reason being is one, obviously you wanna be in a caloric surplus for the majority of your time training because you're gonna gain more strength, more hypertrophy, and cutting just doesn't take as long. However, some of you may think that's too much time cutting, but what you have to understand, if we look down here, when I'm spending three to four years in a bulk, but doing it very lean, where I'm only gaining about 20 pounds in that time period, I'm not jumping up 40 pounds or something, trying to gain you know, a pound of body weight per week or, or something nuts like that, you have to also spend a dedicated amount of time, not just cutting slow to ensure you don't lose strength, but also maintaining a leaner physique to make sure that your body adapts to um, being able to display all that hard work. So I think where people make the mistake is in the bodybuilding community, they tend to bulk and cut a lot faster and that works for them because they don't need to worry about strength maintenance during their cutting phase and they don't even need to train the big three. So for instance, Chris Bumstead, an amazing bodybuilder everyone follows, he doesn't deadlift or squat or do those big movements when he's in his um, bodybuilding preps because why would he? He's a bodybuilder. But if you are a power builder, someone who cares about your strength, you can't just take all that time away. And so you need to cut much slower. And that's why I wrote as the last note here, fast cuts lose strength. And this is why I spent two years, well, it was actually more like eight months cutting and then about another year and a quarter or so maintaining that leanness. And one, just enjoying all the hard work I put in, but two, actually getting my body to adapt its hormone levels to being leaner and setting up uh, your body to be desensitized from a calorie surplus. So when you go through a gaining phase again, like I'm currently doing, looking kind of juicy guys, this has been huge for my results through this bulk. And so nutritional periodization has to be done vastly different. Bodybuilders do it much quicker. Power lifters usually go the perma bulk route where they really only do cleanup phases. And you see these guys pretty much just endlessly go up in their weight classes with hopefully without getting too fat but they rarely care about ever getting leaner. And if you're a power builder, that's not gonna be you. So you have to meet in the middle, and this is gonna be tip number one. 
Okay guys, so tip number two is gonna be training periodization. And what you have to understand, just like the nutritional periodization that has to combine two separate aspects together, the same is gonna be applied here. So it isn't as simple as just training like a power lifter and then tacking on some accessory work or vice versa, training like a bodybuilder while doing the big three. We wanna combine peaking phases and low specificity. So one of the most common mistakes I see people make is they, they think, oh, I don't need to peak my strength out and hit new one rep maxes. I'll just keep building up my baseline and that will be better anyway because I don't need to compete in meets and I'm doing power building training. Um, and then likewise, some people will say, oh, I don't need to do low specificity. I want to train a little bit more like a power lifter and get those better strength gains, but I'll just make sure I'm always doing accessory work. These will not cut it. You have to peak strength to build strength. It is the aspect that actually expresses all the strength you've built from doing the baseline work where you raise your work capacity and all that. Likewise, you have to go through low specificity phases where you're far more focused on bodybuilding in order to optimally grow the body because our muscle insertions and originations everywhere have so many different ways the fibers articulate. You have to use more variation. We just even recently had a study that showed squats build the hell out of your vastus lateralis and upper mid legs but distally almost no hypertrophy takes place. And so there's a lot of different movements you need to do just to get your legs to grow optimally. And if you are a bodybuilder, you're gonna to have to think about this. So in our group training, uh, we have a fusion program. Our fusion program, if you're interested, links in the description, it combines eight weeks of bodybuilding and eight weeks of strength training slash peaking and it literally will peak you out to new one rep maxes at the end of the program every 16 weeks. But what you have to understand is these phases overlap and have aspects of each other, but they are very goal focused. So the first eight weeks will not be that similar to a powerlifting program, but it'll still have enough of the aspects in there in order to ensure that you're making progress and, and still are locking in on the power lifts when you get to the next phase, but building optimal amounts of muscle and creating a, an aesthetic physique. Likewise, the last eight weeks will peak your strength out because like I said, not only do we have to build strength, but towards the end of that strength phase, we gotta peak it out to express it. And that will actually desensitize you from the bodybuilding work and set up your next training cycle. So what's funny is this ends up actually being really optimal for your training and it's just a really fun way to train. So go check out our fusion program, but even if you're not gonna purchase our fusion program, um, you wanna understand these. And the last note I really wanna hammer home here is you can't just add on accessories at the end of your workout. So you can't just go get a powerlifting program and then just do accessories after. Unless you're genetically gifted like a motherfucker, there's zero way this is gonna work. The reason why is when you're training like a powerlifter, there's a reason powerlifters don't do extra accessories at the end of their workout. If they could, they actually probably would, but it's because their CNS is just zapped. When you're doing super heavy squats, deadlifts, and bench press, and then assistance lifts to build those lifts up, and then a few exercises for you know maintaining or slightly building your hypertrophy in areas to ass assist the main lifts, that's already so taxing, your recovery is finite. There's only a certain amount of recovery you're gonna have in a given day or training week, and you can't just keep doing more. So I really wanna stress it is not as simple as just doing accessory work. This is the number one mistake I see in power building programs. Okay guys, tip number three is gonna be about big three technique and the variations you use. These highly matter and taking into account how you approach your big three and also how you approach your off season or your low specificity phases with what variations you use highly matters for power building. So we basically want to optimize leverage and technique with tension and range of motion. So obviously wide stance sumos are not going to build a bumstead 2.0 physique, okay? But they will give you a crazy total. Um, sumo deadlifts are legal in powerlifting, no matter what you think about it, but it's not just down to the sumo deadlifts. It's the bench arch. It's the high specificity and highly repetitive movements. It's the fast descent on the squat, trying to catch rebound and stretch reflex out of the hole. It's all those little nuances that give power lifters that extra edge but also take away from bodybuilding. There's a reason when, um, again, I seem to be referencing Chris Bumstead a lot in this video, but when he squats in the Smith machine usually, he's going down very controlled, very deep. He's not caring too much about load other than just progressively loading through his training cycle to ensure he's getting enough tension in his legs. That's his main goal. How do I tension my legs? 
as where you take a power lifter, let's think of you know the strongest power lifter you know, uh, Jamal Browner or um, SSJ Bob, God, Bob's going nuts in powerlifting right now, right? These guys, they're jacked, don't get me wrong, but they're trying to optimize their technique and their leverages for powerlifting. So of course, if you powerlift, you're gonna get more jacked, and of course, if you bodybuild, you're gonna get stronger, but we're talking about how do we combine both of them as equally as possible, and so we have to think about the big three and the variations and the technique we're using on the big three. So down here, I wrote, find the perfect balance of technique with periodizing your variations. What I mean by this is if you look at my squat, my deadlift, and my bench press, I'm not necessarily trying to only maximize my leverage. In fact, if I did, I would probably pull sumo. Um, I think if I really spent the time acclimating to sumo, I'd be stronger at it, but I just don't care to do that because I have physique-oriented goals as well. Likewise, when I squat, I squat very slow because one, I care about my injury prevention. If I was just going full on with powerlifting and I was like, you know what, I don't care about lifting after my career in powerlifting, I would squat a lot faster and on top of that, I would probably squat wider. And then likewise, I care about the tension going into my quads and my legs. So those wider stance squats, they're not gonna cut it for building muscle maximally. And so I actually think about how I even execute my big three lifts in relation to maximizing my strength, but also maximizing my uh, tension in my body. Okay, but along with that, we have to think about periodizing variations like our fusion group coaching program and even our SPD program, to be honest, uh, which is our powerlifting focus program. The fusion is our power building program. These are going to really help us, um, or, or excuse me, the off season phases, the first eight weeks where we're building muscle work capacity, um, improving our leverages, you know, fixing technical weak points. We're kind of using a lot more variations. During this phase, we're gonna do a lot of longer range of motions with the variations. We're gonna do a lot of muscle building activity. So if you're a sumo deadlifter, you're not gonna be sumo deadlifting twice a week in the first eight weeks, even on the SPD program, but definitely not the fusion program. You're gonna be doing a lot more RDLs, conventional deadlifts, deficit deadlifts, like long range of motion actions back there, and you're gonna have even more accessories on top of that. Is that gonna be absolutely optimal for strength? No, but that's why you're a power builder and not a power lifter. And I think that's what people don't like is you have to combine both. There's a reason, you know, my power lifting is not slightly better because I do care about my physique. And so I'm trying to combine both of these. And so the variations and when you implement them really matters. And that goes back to the training periodization. I always bias control and tension with my big three. I don't like to try to be fast and explosive just to move more weight. I think about my muscles loading in my bench press. I could probably arch bigger if I wanted to mobilize for it. I just don't care to because I, yeah, I wanna be strong so I arch, but I'm not trying to build my total by arching as big as possible. Um, speed isn't size friendly and extra tension isn't strength friendly. So obviously the slower you go in a squat, the harder it's gonna get. The faster you go in a squat, the easier it's gonna get within obviously certain parameters. If you go too fast and just misgroove, you're gonna fall out of position. But generally speaking, these two things combat each other and yet they're both lined with their antithesis goals. So, you know, powerlifters try to generally move very explosively, don't care about tension and vice versa with bodybuilders. You have to think about this. And again, I think this comes back to training periodization. So this, this tip here really ties into the training. If you have, you know, eight, 16 weeks, however long you wanna do it, whether you use our programs or come up with your own, you gotta spend some time training more like a bodybuilder, feeling your muscles tension. The mind-muscle connection does matter for bodybuilding. Going more controlled, not worrying about load as much. But then when you go to those powerlifting phases, you need to leave that in the back burner. And now you need to think about moving explosively, just lifting the weight as efficiently as possible, maximizing leverage. And that's why I shift my mindset depending on which phase I'm in, okay? This is really important to understand that's the video, guys. If you're interested in our group coaching, use the description box down below, sign up. We really have a huge goal this year. I wanna to try to get to 100 members in there steady. I'm not like some of these other you know, channels that have like thousands of people signing up because I really wanna keep producing more content for this channel. And actually today, we have a cameraman, Brady, who is behind the camera. He's got a fancy setup here that really makes my tripod and everything else I'm using look rather ridiculous. He's helping me film this video. And this is gonna be actually the first video we're doing together. In future videos, we're gonna be doing a ton of content from the website. Him and I just sat down and we game planned out so much what we wanna do and how many videos we wanna release per week. 
So lots of content coming to our private website for group coaching members, or if you're a one-on-one -on -one coaching athlete, or if you're interested in our one-on-one -on -one coaching services, use the description box down below. I'll catch you guys in future videos. Have a good day or night, depending on what time it is.